Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video is all about raised beds. So this is a viewer submission video where several of you sent in pictures of your raised bed gardens and information about them. So we're just gonna jump right in with the first one, which is from Vanessa in Saskatchewan, Canada, zone 3B. That is so cold. I wonder like how long from what month to what month your growing season is. Let's take a look. Oh, I like that. That is my kind of gardening right there. Look at how tidy that is, you guys. Look at how beautiful the grass is and the patio and the fire pit and then the really organized growing space. So uh, Vanessa said four by four cedar is what they used, stacked four high. And she loves that she's able to sit on the side to do weeding, um, to plant, to harvest, all that sort of thing, which I can totally agree with. When it's comfortable to garden, it makes the projects that you're working on so much more pleasant. So let's take another look here at a different view. Oh, so you can see the trellises. So the trellises were installed in three of the raised beds so that they could grow cucumbers and peas. So those three beds are used for vegetables. And then the fourth is all strawberries. They added a cage with netting over the strawberry bed, which is a super uh, really smart thing to do if you've got wildlife wanting to eat on your strawberries. And it looks so good and cohesive with the rest. So the trellises being black and then the cage being black. Uh, we quickly outgrew the three beds for vegetables, so added grow bags for peppers and tomatoes last year. And you guys, there's a video. Let's take a look. So you can see the nice edging with the gravel. I'm wondering if you put any landscape fabric under that gravel. We did that in our raised bed garden and I'm so thankful that we did that. It's not underneath the raised beds, but it's underneath the gravel. I see the rainwater catch system too off of your shed and rhubarb in the back, right? Really beautiful, Vanessa. Next one is from Dawn in New Jersey, zone 6A. Oh, this is an enclosed space. I always like that, like that creating that room so, which makes sense, Don says that there's very heavy deer and critter pressure. Um, they built this garden in 2020, so it's not very old. There are 18 raised beds in here, you guys. Now, this first picture that we're looking at, my eye is drawn immediately to the containers, that color right there in the front. But do you see the leaves coming in right there on each side? Those are figs. You see the figs forming up on them? That's exciting to me. Oh, oh here's a before shot. Ooh, that makes it really easy to see. It makes it easy to see the layout of the whole space and before all the wood was stained as well. So 18 raised beds built from treated lumber, lined and stained. The beds are two feet wide, which is a really comfortable distance, 12 inches deep, so 12 inch root like soil area, but they're built up 32 inches high uh, with the exception of two ground level beds for asparagus and strawberries. So the beds are modular each have their own fence panel four foot high from the top of the bed and can be unbolted and moved, which is the, this year's project to enclose and incorporate the greenhouse that's right behind him, which is 2021's project was the addition of the greenhouse. Now look at this picture here. Uh, before the greenhouse is there, how beautiful that stained wood is. Oh my goodness, I love this layout. And a snow picture. That's really beautiful. I love seeing how you, those of you who deal with uh, deer pressure and things, I love to see how you guys handle that. It's not something that we deal with here. I mean, we all have our own set of, you know, garden troubles, but, and deer is not one of ours, but it's interesting. And I, I like the look of that. I like that enclosed. It makes it feel cozy and like it's its own space. Next is from Jessica in Virginia, zone 7A. Oh, okay, so we've got a black arbor right in front, which I love. I love the black stained wood. You guys know this. I love the black picket. You can see back behind and you can just see the raised beds peeking through there. Let's see if we go to the next picture. Yep, you can see them a lot better right there. Kind of like a top down shot almost. Boy, your plants look healthy. You see the beets and there's, what are those zinnias in there? Some kind of a squash. Oh, I love seeing what other people plant in their gardens. But these beds are made out of two by fours and metal roofing. Her husband put these together. They're eight foot by two foot and about three feet tall. I love the ranch panel that looks like they have been cut um, arbors, I'll, you know, in between each one of them there. Here's another angle. You can see some more tall zinnias. There's a, some marigolds in there, sunflower in the back. That's a really neat look. I like the color that you, you painted or stained the boards too. It's a really pretty contrast to that metal. Oh, and there's a look through the front. You guys looking underneath the arbors. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. Beautiful, Jessica. 
Next up, Stephanie in Austria, zone five. These are terraced raised beds. What an interesting idea for this type of area. I think that, that a slope like this right up against, it looks like your home, would be a difficult one to think of what to do with a space like that. You guys have done a great job. So these uh, south facing, but protection from around 3 p.m. So they're six raised beds. They're made from ship planks, which are pressure treated spruce gravel walkways in between. Uh, they started this project in 2018 uh, and they're able to eat in the summertime tomatoes, zucchini, peppers, salad, greens, peas, beans, etc. And then winter, which there's a picture of winter, uh, she builds hoops out of tubes in a harvest guard so that they can extend harvest and probably get some greens and such out of that space. I really like the way you guys utilized that area. So on the east side, we will build an alpine alpinarium slash rock garden. That sounds interesting. So that's this year's project. Great idea, Stephanie. Next is Jamie in New Hampshire, zone 4A. Oh, that's pretty. Whoa, that looks like a dusk shot. Great vantage point looking over those pink roses of some kind. There's some hardy geraniums and nepeta down below it and some salvia poking in from the left there. Looks like hosta leaves right in the bottom left, but oh, that's a beautiful look over your vegetable garden area. Now, I only see that you included one picture. I'd like to see more pictures from your garden. This is so pretty. So it looks like there's 16 raised beds from this view anyway, 16 square raised beds that are made with local cedar bolted together, filled up with compost and vegetables but I love how you've positioned everything. The gravel walkways look really tidy. Uh, the little seating area right there to enjoy the space is nice as well. But that shed in the background with that warm glow, I can see some hanging baskets there and some kind of a hoop house structure. I like seeing that too, but it makes me wanna walk back there and see what you've got going on in there. That's gorgeous. Next is from Lisa in New Hampshire, zone 6A. Oh boy, that's beautiful. I love the whole thing, everything about this picture. Okay, now let's start with your side yard here. <laughs> Look at the flagstone patio and all the gorgeous plants. I love the color that you chose for your house. I think it's really pretty and unusual. Like I don't see that color all over the place, which makes it stand out, but it contrasts the garden that you've put in just beautifully. So Lisa said that they had to have a huge maple removed in this area, which made it way more sunny. Um, so they're kind of utilizing the area uh, for what it is now. You know, you have more sunshine, so now you can grow some things. So they decided to put this area together in the form of a potager. She said, I found most of the materials for free. For free, really? On Marketplace. I need to get on Marketplace more. Dang. The bottoms are made out of pressure treated two by 12s. The lattice work on top was ripped from two by force and woven. The inside is aligned with plastic and the bottom half of the beds is filled up with wood chips from the maple they had removed. I love how you utilize and find your materials. It's awesome. Uh, and other yard debris. We also wanted to tie the area together with existing pieces in our garden. I think that's really important with the bluestone and cobble brick borders. It took me until the end of the season to finish since I was doing most of the work myself. You did beautiful, beautiful job. Uh, and with help from her husband, and then we haven't been able to use it yet. I'm looking forward to growing some cutting flowers and vegetables this year, and they have peach sorbet blueberries in the pots on the corners. I love the winter interest that these beds and red uh, leaves have from the blueberries have added, and that would be a gorgeous structure to look at in the winter time. Oh, there's a before picture, you guys, look at this. So we get a different vantage point. So this is actually, like, is this considered like from the other picture, it looked like the back of the house, but it looks like it's right there on the road. I would love to drive by and see that. And there's the picture after the beds have been placed, the bottom of the beds. So we get another look kind of at the area and how the whole thing is laid out. And then there's a picture, again, another vantage point, another picture of how the beds are lined and what the whole area kind of looks like from just a different, a different location a close up at the, at the center there with the planter or a bird bath. I'm not sure if that's a planter or, or a bird bath, probably use it either way. That's a beautiful uh, pathway, like patio area. Well, that is gonna be so much fun for you, Lisa, this year um, to be able to utilize it and really use it to its full potential. I love the uniqueness of the lattice top and the little finials at the corners. I think those added details add so much 
to a garden space. Now we have Marnie from Connecticut, zone 6A. Oh, this picture just looks lush. All that green. I love the shed in the background. The whole area just looks so cozy and homey to me. Okay, so it looks like we have four raised beds. Two are larger toward the back. I like the posts with the finials on top and then two smaller ones toward the front. Large rhubarb in between, somewhere to sit, which is nice. We're gonna be working on that in our own garden this year. Making comfortable areas to sit so you can sit and enjoy when you're out walking around and sit and look at what you have done and what you need to add and make plans and just enjoy, enjoy it. Here's a close up look right after planting. Geez, everything looks so healthy. The boxwoods there, the soil looks really good too. I like the color of mulch you used in between the beds as well. Look at the backdrop, guys. <laughs> look at the trees. Oh, the green trees. Erin, this is somewhere you would want to move, like right today. Like, sign me up. Look at the lush green background. So Marnie said that she designed these 15 years ago and her husband built them. So 15 years old and they still look really good. Next one is from a warmer zone. This is Linden, California, zone 9A. Oh, those are some big raised beds. Oh my goodness. So they're made from redwood, which is what we used for ours. It was a little bit less expensive version of cedar and they've held up really well for us. So I'm happy with it. Um, with concrete castle corners, which made the beds very easy to put together. The bottom third of the raised beds are filled with oak logs that they already had on their property and the top two thirds is compost. Uh, she said this is her first year gardening in the raised beds. Uh, her husband built the vertical arches using cattle panels. Those are so handy. We use zip ties to attach the panels to the T-posts. T-posts are uh, also very handy. She grew green beans, tomatoes, cucumbers, and winter squash up the panels. And the other beds had corn, yellow squash, bush beans, basil, sweet peppers, hot peppers, peas, asparagus, and strawberries. I also grew lots of sunflowers, zinnias, and cosmos. Oh, I love the look from underneath the arches. I think that's so beautiful. There's a backed up shot, so you can kind of see there's four long raised beds, looks like maybe gravel in between, and then two shorter raised beds up front there. I see you have a hose link. Don't you love it? They are so wonderful. We've been working on getting ours out and kind of like making sure all of the, the uh, hose ends are working and like just the normal spring routine on all of our hoses. And so, yes. Didn't you order some other ones? We ordered a couple more. <laughs> We love our hose links so much. Yeah, we're putting out like four new ones this year. Yeah. Oh, and there's a picture of the flowers. That's a perfect time to take pictures too, isn't it? Like right before the sun goes down. So we can see some cosmos. There's some bright azaleas up there. Uh, I see a squash flower on that trellis and sunflowers. I really like that. It's a really good idea to use those concrete corners. Yeah, if you guys are looking for a, like an easy way to put together beds without needing a bunch of extra like hardware or tools. That's great. Beautiful job, Lynn. Next, Molly in Vancouver, Washington, zone 8B. Ooh, we have three pictures from three different years. How fun. So first one is from 2011, 11 year old fence garden we made in our field on five acres. Immediately realized the tough grass was gonna be a problem. Put down thick weed barrier, raised beds and two foot of crushed concrete around the beds. Fence was built to keep out the deer and support her wisteria. In 2020 was the year my husband started to replace the raised beds. Okay, but let's see, 2011, the next picture is 2015. So take a look at it, to look at how beautiful that is. You can see the crushed concrete. You can see the fenced in garden area, that beautiful wisteria. Oh, that, so pretty, so pretty. I love the pop of red too with your chairs. I think that was a good choice to put in there. And I like how your raised beds, you guys see that, how some of them are capped. I think that's a really pretty look. Some of them looks like they aren't capped, some of them are. Mm. Okay, so now 2021. Look at the differences here. So 2020 was the year her husband started to replace the raised beds with the tall galvanized beds for ease as we get older. Erin and I have talked about that, how like every year we should just add another board onto our raised bed so that by the time like that we would really appreciate having higher raised beds, maybe we'll have them at that height. Um, and I do think there is something to be said about that. Again, make it comfortable. It'll make it so much more pleasant. Um, he also built onto the old arbor for the wisteria I planted all those years ago. Many hours are spent sitting inside this space enjoying the beauty and calm. Love watching your videos. I've explained to people many times in my travels the vast differences between the west side and east side of Washington and Oregon State. That is so true, isn't it? Oh my goodness. When I say we're from Oregon, I think people assume, you know, coastal, 
Pacific Northwest with trees and lush green. It's very different on the eastern side of Oregon for sure, as it is on the eastern side of Washington. Oh, but you guys have done a really fun job and it's fun to see the progression through the years and how you have made changes to make it work for you. I think that's really important. Next is from Michelle in Reno, Nevada, zone 7A. Oh my word. Yep, that looks like Reno. I've been through Reno a few times. You know what though, it has a beauty of its own, even though it's like not got the green backdrop of trees, look at the sky. Like that sky is gorgeous. We get a lot of beautiful sunrises and sunsets here as well. Beautiful colors, absolutely gorgeous. Your garden space is really, really pretty. Um, the white arbor, I like the, how that contrasts just the whole, the whole scene right there. Nice, uh, nice bright pop. Let's see, the beds are filled with three quarters of the way with triple mix and then the top layer is compost that she makes from the cows that they raise. And then also with some um, vermiculite and peat moss. We have the same climate as you, Laura, but we have a shorter growing season and less water. So making sure your garden doesn't dry out is a priority. They don't have a drip system set up, um, so she hand waters, which is something that she would change. Um, most definitely. Drip has been very handy and so efficient. It's a much more efficient, you, I mean, hand watering is definitely efficient because you can give it, your plants exactly what you need to. Um, when you start adding more and more projects, drip is really nice because you can also be very efficient with your water. Make sure it's going exactly where you need it to go and not watering the rest of the land at the same time. I like your addition of the barrels too. I think that that's a really pretty look. Next is Heather in Ohio, zone 6A. Ooh, we get a before shot here. Okay, so Heather said that they built a pole barn you see on the right hand side uh, for her husband's antique trucks in the side yard so that she took that opportunity to build a raised bed garden in between the house and his new garage. Oh, look at that. You can see it starting to form up there. Raised beds, fire rings. I like the trellis in the back. That's a really pretty addition. Okay, so here it is a little bit further along in its design. You can see that the um, gravel layer is down. And then now look at it, you guys, full of plants. Look at how pretty that is. So you've added some obelisks for things or trellises of some kind in the fire rings for some vines to grow up. Lots of um, bright blue, that teal blue. That's real, really eye-catching. She said if she had her way, she'd spend all her time out there. I think we all feel the same way about our own gardens. Now we have Amanda in Arkansas, zone 6B. Ooh, this is kind of an interim shot, kind of a before shot. Look at the stone. Okay, so we've got a rectangular section cut out in the yard, a stone border, stone raised beds, and an arbor so far. Let's look a little bit later. Oh, there's an overhead. So you've added a, like a crushed gravel layer and a couple of flower beds on either side. So the area is, has developed quite a bit. So fun to see like a more top down bird's eye view of an area. I like the idea of the stones. So Amanda said she gave her husband a garden inspiration picture after we built their, after they built their home. Uh, the goal was to have a manageable and beautiful kitchen garden full of veggies with small cutting gardens at both ends. They began this project in 2019 um, using stone to line the beds and garden filling in the walking paths with pea gravel. A year later, they added a cutting gar the cutting garden and then begin plantings. So this year, she's hoping the cutting garden will be their best yet full of annuals, roses, and iris. We've enjoyed plenty of veggies from these three beds, which are four foot by eight foot. Um, they added a gated arbor for a point of entry, an affordable fence, so the T-posts, rubber-coated square fence, and nylon twine on top of that, on the top half, and then a bench to sit and enjoy the garden. She's living a dream she didn't know to dream. That is so sweet. And the garden is really pretty. I really like how you've designed it. Next is Adrian in Harrisburg, Oregon, zone 8A. I'm guessing closer to the western side of the state than we are, being um, such a warmer zone than we are. Oh, I like the height of your beds. Oh, I like that a lot. So you used, looks like two by 12s, but stacked too high. So Adrian said, when we bought our house, this area was filled with brush. After clearing it out, we designed a pattern of cedar raised beds, and I like the L shapes. We have a few L shapes ourselves, and it works really well. Um, they're raised, let's see, designed a pattern of cedar raised beds four feet wide and at the longest portion eight feet long. The pattern isn't perfect due to the bank of a river that runs through our property, but it's still very visually pleasing. I should say so. 
My husband and, and father-in-law thought I was crazy to insist on having the beds two boards high, but after two seasons, they both agree with me that it is the best. I saved the center area for a fountain, but in the meantime, we've been using a small movable fire pit there. We like it so much that we might that it might stay. That is a really fun thing to have out there. Um, something to just like bring everybody together. Uh, the only thing I would change is that it's not worth it to pay for weed fabric under the gravel pathways uh, as the weeds just grow right on top. And I have to say like we did uh, weed fabric under our gravel in our raised bed area. And there are a few weeds that will grow on top, but I think far, far less than wood if we didn't put gravel down. I think it might depend on the type of area you've got going. We have bindweed in our that particular area so bad. I think we would have been struggling with that for a long time. Um, boy, that's a good picture of that area right there. Looks like you're standing on top of something maybe, a little bit more top down and you can really see the design there. I actually like that the design isn't perfectly balanced. It looks perfectly balanced because you can definitely tell there's something going on. You know, the edge of the bank there, it looks like you utilize that space perfectly. I really like that. And I like the wood pole trellises. That's a great idea. Next up is Sabrina and Andrew in Ontario, Canada, zone five. Ooh, another fenced in raised bed area. Love that, love the arbor up front with the hanging baskets. So Sabrina said she and her husband built this vegetable garden in spring of 2021. So this is gonna be your second season using it. How fun. After watching your videos for the last few years, thank you for that. A vegetable garden was a dream project of ours and we couldn't be more thrilled with how it turned out. So the past growing season they did, uh, they had a ton of success growing greens, beans, uh, corn, pumpkins, tomatoes, and squash. And now that they um, are a little bit more familiar with the growing, you know, how things will grow, they're uh, hoping to double their growing production. I love that. Uh, we've got all the lumber from their local sawmill to cut costs and then soil delivered in bulk from a landscape company in their area and they grew almost everything from seed. Oh, you guys did a great job. Next is Nicholas in Connecticut, zone 7A. Oh, oh, I like this space. You did L shapes with a centerpiece. Oh, I love that and the bench I love. I see an obelisk in there and your plants look happy, really happy. Oh, and Nicholas says he's 19 years old and has been watching the, our videos for a few years. That's so awesome. Thank you for that, Nicholas. Oh, so when creating his raised beds, um, use the same design as we did, but just use the four L-shaped beds using two by eight pressure treated wood for each bed. Uh, he did half his own soil and the re rest was raised bed mix. And to water, he put in a quarter inch drip, one quarter inch uh, drip tubing running through all the beds. And for the gravel around it, used three quarters chip. I uh, planted some vegetables and some flowers, but this year I want to add more flowers than vegetables. Kind of how it goes. Year to year, I feel like I uh, take a different approach every single year and want to just try out something new. And that's the fun part about raised beds is that we're not really planting anything in these to last forever, typically. And so we can really change up our thought process or our design or what we want to grow from year to year. And I love, just love the look of your garden. Now, I did notice that you took a beautiful picture from back behind some hydrangeas. Now look at this, you guys. Look at over this garden space, all the layering. There's a rock wall back there. There's a beautiful picket fence. And those two back raised beds have um, trellises back behind. So you can use some of that area to grow vertically. And I do see an artichoke and some nasturtiums in there. You've done a beautiful job, Nicholas. Bravo. Next is Stephanie in Massachusetts, zone 6B. Ooh, we have progression shots. So picture number one, she, cre she created a legend for the pictures here so we could kind of understand what's going on. This is the construction picture before the soil was put in. So the raised bed is a four by eight cedar raised bed that's 24 inches high. And then the trellis, she said she likes the aged copper look. So she went with half inch copper pipes soldered in this shape. And from the surface of the, so the top of the raised bed to the top of the trellis is seven feet. So seven feet of vertical space and then eight feet across the top there. Uh, and then the next picture here is when it's been ready to plant. So filled up with soil, you can see there. Number three, oh, I like this. Planted with tomatoes and pepper plants, only tomatoes were attached to the lower and the lower and lean trellis is what that's called. So there's a whole bunch of strings going from the raised bed up to the top so they can grow in more of like a, almost like a Florida weave 
but without the weave sort of situation. It's just so you have something to keep um, attaching your tomato to it. And this is after six weeks, very happy babies. And then this one is a, a late August picture. So you can see how the tomatoes, that's what indeterminate tomatoes do. They just keep on growing. As long as you have something to attach them to, like they will grow into a big tree if you let them. And you can see all the tomatoes underneath, how easy it is to harvest those. And I see this beginnings of another raised bed there on the grass. That's exciting. And then this is a moody early September morning fog picture. Well, isn't that pretty? Your backdrop is beautiful. Oh. See the marigold sitting in there, the lemon colored ones and the orange. So the lower and lean trellis system with the tomato hooks worked beautifully even in their high wind area and held up in two summer storms and one hurricane. This season, Stephanie is planning on attaching some Horta Nova netting onto the trellis to support spring snap peas and then transition in June to cucumbers and then center cut squash to grow up the netting vertically. Boy, you sound just so organized and I love that and I wish I could be more like that. <laughs> I never know what I'm gonna do. I'm planting my garden, I think tomorrow, and I have no idea what's going in any of the beds. <laughs> I'll figure it out when I get out there, I suppose. And the last one for today is from Dave and Kathy in Ohio, zone 6A. Whoa, that's a, that's a big garden space. Look at all those beds. So four really long rectangles. It looks like three smaller rectangles and then three squares. I really like how you have that laid out there. There's plenty of space to get around each one of them and they're laid out in a really pretty organized fashion. Kathy said that their beds are made out of cedar and her husband had a local fabrication shop make the bent aluminum corners uh, that are painted black. I think Gardner Supply sells some very similar corners to that. We have them on our raised beds behind the greenhouse in case anybody's interested in something like that to help keep their boards together. Um, that helps with shifting over time and that's very true. We have uh, different size beds ranging from 4x4, 4x8, and 4x12 and they put down some regular dirt or soil first and then the majority is raised bed garden soil that they purchased at Lowe's on sale until they came across a local business that had um, some bulk product that they could put in their, their beds. Uh, they started this in spring of 2019 with only four beds that were only one board high, eight inches. Let me look, let's look through the rest of these pictures here. See if there are any, of uh, these look like they're all after the beds were doubled. She said after they started with that eight inch size bed, they ended up by the end doubling it to 16 inches because they aren't getting any younger. Ah, <laughs> oh, Erin, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Um, yeah, higher raised beds. If you're going to the effort to, to make them, making them higher is just, I mean, I know it, it doubles the uh, cost of lumber and the cost of compost to fill them, but boy, it, it is worth it to make them higher. Uh, the garden is on the north side of their home, but receives full sun all afternoon and has a big, uh, beautiful big silver maple on the east that gives it some shade in the morning. With a, that along with a nice breeze is where you can find me in the morning with my coffee. Oh, or in the evening with a glass of wine. That's a really pretty layout. I love that. And that is it for today's raised beds. Thank you so much to all of you who sent in pictures and information. So much fun to see your garden spaces and to hear about the things that you have had success growing. It makes me excited just hearing the words beans and squash and corn and tomatoes. It makes me excited to get out there and get started and try some new things out myself and to see like different trellising methods and different configurations at all is really inspirational. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.